In today's video, we're going to talk about entering pension payments in Xero. If you're a UK employer and you have auto-enrolled employees, then you will be dealing with pension payments. So let's take a look at how you enter that pension payment when it feeds through your bank in Xero. We're on our Xero dashboard and when we go to reconcile our bank transactions, this is the payment that's being made to our pension provider next. So over at the right hand side, we're going to use a create transaction. We could set up a rule. We're going to say the payment is to next. And then when we code it, we're going to look for pension codes. I have two options. And what's important here is to look at the account code numbers. There's a 400 code and an 800 code. 400 codes are costs, 800 codes are liabilities. I don't want to enter this as a cost because the cost has already been dealt with. I need to enter this and code it to the liability code. We already have a liability in zero that we're due to pay this amount and this is simply paying it over. So it's important that you choose the 800, the balance sheet code. And we're just going to say monthly pension and we're going to say okay. So let's take this a stage further. If we have zero payroll, that's all that we would need to do. But sometimes we might be using zero for our accounts, but we are using different software for our payroll. In that case, and I have a video about it, we would need to enter a manual journal to show the payroll amounts. And if I pick one up here, here's an example that we've done before. This is a very straightforward payroll journal where we've got salaries, national insurance, a student loan, and the amounts that are due to pay to HMRC, and then the amounts due to our employees. So again, we see the costs are 400 codes and the liabilities amount to pay over are 800 codes and the student loan is a 900 one. So if we had pension amounts, we would need to add them here. So I'm going to go journal options and I'm just going to edit this journal. Remember there are two codes for pension. So the first one I'm going to look at is the cost code it's 482 and then I'm going to add a further line and I'm going to add the liability. So first of all we need to think about what the cost is and in this example the £105 is made up of the employer's contribution of 45 and the employee's contribution of 60. So we need to add these figures. So first of all what is the cost to our business? So the cost to our business is only the employer amount. So that is the £45. So then what's the liability? Well, we know the amount we have to pay over is 105 So we're going to enter that as a credit, create a liability. And look now, our journal doesn't balance. And the reason that our journal doesn't balance, this £60 is the employee's contribution. So if that was the case, the wages payable, this is the amount, the net pay that goes to employees, that amount would be £60 less. So if I couldn't work it out, I can be lazy, I can use a zero calculator, 1550 minus 60. So the net pay would now be 1,490. So just to recap on that again, if we were using zero payroll, we wouldn't need to do this journal. This would be already taken care of. We would only be coding the payment when it feeds through the bank and we'd be coding it to the 800 liability code. In this instance, we're not using zero payroll. We're using other software for our payroll. It might be Sage, it might be BrightPay, and we're entering a manual journal each month to enter the payroll costs and the payroll liabilities. So part of that journal will include the pension amounts. We've got the cost to the business, which is the employer amount. We've got the liability, which is employer and employee that we'll pay over each month and the employee's net wage will be reduced by their contribution. So that is how you enter pension payments in zero.